how does prostate cancer treatment affect sex and intimacy? Well, the most common side effect, whether we take out the prostate with surgery, whether we radiate the prostate, or whether we use hormone ablation or a combination of these things, is difficulty getting and keeping erections, which is erectile dysfunction. Also, ejaculation changes. If we remove or we radiate the prostate, that's where the fluid comes together that is ejaculated out during ejaculation or climax. So men still climax or ejaculate, but nothing comes out after surgery or radiation typically, or very little comes out. So it may still feel good. It may still be enjoyable. Most men definitely can still climax, orgasm, ejaculate, but the fluid no longer comes out and it can affect that experience and certainly um, that can be different when fluid is not coming out. The penis may sort of pull back in the body and disappear sort of after surgery because of increased muscle tone initially, but sometimes if you don't eventually get erections, muscle atrophy can occur and problems with erections. So all these things can impact men and it can impact their partners. I wondered, you know, about the status of the relationship, of course, you know, I had heard that, you know, it was going to have a physical impact, um, you know, a sexual impact. And I did not know, I don't say I didn't know. Uh, I, I knew Shay would, would stick with me. I felt that she would stick with me throughout whatever, but it still comes into your mind. It's kind of like, man, you know, this is a lot for me. And, and I think what, one of the things that we talked about on, we talk about frequently on a podcast is you know when you when you're talking about prostate cancer there's a whole lot of discussion about the impact that it has on uh the male or the you know the initiator of this sexual experience but the partner also has a significant impact on them and i don't think that people talk about that enough uh it just really requires a tremendous level of unselfishness. Just a reminder, to ensure that you stay up to date on the latest episodes from PCRT, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button. You cannot ignore the fact that your relationship will change because you're going through cancer treatment. We can't ignore the fact that this will have an impact on your partners. And so even how you tell your partners who you talk to is, is a big deal. So I always try to encourage men to bring their, their partners in, their trusted family member or support person, sometimes it's their best friend, into that meeting. So one, that someone will hear you, uh, hear the doctor give this information and actually can absorb some of it. Take notes even, right? So that you can know what that doctor said because if you hear cancer, most men are like in, a deer in headlights. Hmm. They, they, they only heard cancer. They didn't hear me tell them about the sexual side effects. Part of men's difficulty in telling their partners that we I have prostate cancer is you expect me to be around for you until you're old and ready to die, and I can't promise you that, right? That's a big hit to your role as a protective provider. I think sexually, sex plays a big role into relationships intimacy. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a big a need for people to be able to redefine what intimacy looks like after prostate cancer treatment, um, because even the anxiety or stress of going through it can make erectile dysfunction happen. So when you're sitting and you're giving them that, you know, dreaded, you know, diagnose, oh my God, you know, I'm sorry to say, but you have prostate cancer. Do you explain to them or do they understand in that moment, their potential side effects from having prostate cancer? And if they do, is that a determining factor or a uh, part of their decision-making process as to whether they're going to have the surgery or not? The answer is that the answer is it's all over the place. You know, uh -huh. like there are people who had a family history or a friend who had prostate cancer, and so they are much more aware of what the prostate is. I go to churches a lot to do talks pre-COVID, and most men don't know that it's not. A prostrate. It's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. a prostrate. Yeah. And I'm not just saying black men, I'm saying men across racial groups. Uh -huh. They they can identify on the their body where a woman's ovary is, where the uterus is, and where the cervix is before they know what their prostate is. 
And they definitely know what those organs do in a woman much better than they know the prostate's function in themselves. And I can't figure out why that is. <laughs> I think we're very <laughs> motivated to know about women's health for our own sexual needs mm-hmm. if we're straight. Or we also are motivated to probably avoid baby making until we, you know, try to figure out what's going on, right? I know men who can count their woman's cycles, but they don't know what their profit is. Mm -hmm. Do they make that decision about surgery knowing the potential side effect that it could be some sexual dysfunction or there could be a while before, you know, you're listening to Marvin Gaye again? Are they aware of the sexual side effects uh, when they're making this decision? It's our urologist's job to do that work, right? So I draw a lot of pictures. My clerks make fun of me because I'm always drawing pictures about where the prostate is and what it does and how it connects to the bladder and the urethra and the, the nerves come in right next to it for erection to help them understand the basics of what surgery does, what radiation does, and what a body is really doing, right? So that they get what just happened to them. So if someone forces me, I'll try to figure out for them what their priority is. Is your priority in life the number of years that you live, the quality of life in terms of sexual performance, or the quality of life in terms of urination and and kind of feeling your best self energetic-wise? Are you forming a new relationship with someone where you need your sexual function for the next few years? A lot of single guys out there who get prostate cancer diagnosis and they're dating someone new after a divorce or whatever. I don't necessarily recommend surgery for those folks if they need more time to cement their relationship with their new partner. Because of sexuality and intimacy is a big part of that. And I can throw a monkey wrench in. Mm-hmm. So I try to figure out what their priorities are. And then I still end up sometimes giving my recommendation and I will rank them. Here are your four options. I would rank this one for this reason, this two for this reason, this three for this reason. This is my last choice for this reason. As we begin to close the show, we hope you enjoyed this episode and recommend subscribing so you don't miss out on anything new.